introduce myself, I suppose. I'm John Goodenough, head of the Mechanical Engineering Department at the University of Texas at Austin. Dr. Goodenough is famed for the development of the lithium-ion rechargeable battery back in 1980, among many other electrochemistry discoveries. As an expert in chemical battery storage, Cleantex asked him some questions about the future of chemical battery storage. Is the lithium-ion battery still the go-to battery chemistry technology, or do you see any prospect for an alternative battery chemistry to become more accepted in the future? future. Yes, I do see an alternate technology. The lithium-ion battery has been very successful for handheld devices. It doesn't compete with the energy that's stored in a fossil fuel. Modern society can no longer be sustainable uh, on its consumption of fossil fuels. So we have to find a way to reduce, if not eliminate, our dependence on fossil fuels. In the first place it is important to do so is on your, our highways because you have distributed uh, air pollution coming out of the back of all these cars and with the growing population and the growing number of cars and already people in the large cities choking to death, it's imperative that we find a way to have clean energy on the highways and that means an electric car. So you can't do that with your present lithium ion battery. You need something that is safe, has a longer cycle life, has a bigger uh, volumetric energy density than what you can do with a lithium-ion battery. What specific applications for energy storage have the most promise to achieve mass adoption and economies of scale in the next five to ten years? Well, that's a difficult problem, but if you can, if we can develop, as I believe we can, a battery that is capable of driving an electric vehicle at a competitive cost, competitive convenience uh, uh, with the cars that are run by the internal combustion engine, then it will have many, many applications. They'll be driving boats, they'll be driving <laughs> uh, uh, drones, they'll be, uh, as well as cell telephones, as all kinds of things as well as the grid, because if you can solve the problem of cost and so on for the car, then you're going to solve the problem for the grid also. I told you, well, as they say, in Hydro-Quebec they've already found a solution, but it's at two volts, and that exists now, but I believe in about five years there'll be other batteries that will compete with that as far as cost and energy density is concerned. How sustainable is our current battery technology? What are some ways to ensure future generations will have a reliable energy storage that is environmentally sustainable? Well, I think that if we can convert from lithium batteries to sodium batteries, sodium is available in the sea. The lithium is available in not necessarily friendly countries, <laughs> and the lithium needs to be recycled. The sodium is, well, either one is fine. There'll be both lithium batteries and sodium batteries, but with a sodium battery you lose three tenths of a volt, and the problem of the cathode is a little bit more tricky with sodium than it is with lithium. But I believe that sodium batteries are doable. We're already doing that with some. And uh, so I think there'll be sodium batteries as well as lithium batteries. But I say sodium and lithium, meaning not lithium ion and sodium ion, that is using sodium and lithium as the anodes safely in your battery. Do you see solid state storage as being the battery technology of the future? I believe that the solid state storage will be. I, undoubtedly, there'll be 
many different batteries, but I think large-scale batteries, at least for driving cars, will need to have a solid electrolyte. And I, and I think people will be surprised at some of the different things we're able to do with these solid-state batteries. You recently celebrated your 95th birthday as a world-renowned scientist, a World War II veteran, and a man who's witnessed great changes during the 20th century. Do you have any words of wisdom for our viewers? As scientists, we're desperately trying to find a technical solution for our human problems here this century. And unless we learn to make some wise moral decisions and have some moral leadership we're not going to make it thank you so much for your input and time dr good enough be sure to follow clean techs for more news and updates on the clean tech industry in texas Thanks, guys <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs>